Okay, so in this section we'll be looking at a technique called integration uh, by recognition um, and quite often, um, at least at um, school, we tend to refer to these as hence questions. Um, so we've actually done this a couple of times as I've worked through the um, rules for integration for various antiderivatives. So when we looked at how do we come up with a rule for anti-differentiating sine and cos, we used this exact process. Okay, And what we do here is we use what we know about a derivative in order to work out an antiderivative that we couldn't otherwise work out. So for example, ultimately here in this first question, we're trying to work out this antiderivative. Now we don't have the tools to be able to anti-differentiate that because it's a quotient of two functions that we can't otherwise simplify. Okay, So what we need instead to be able to do is to be walked through this process. And in maths methods, you will always be walked through the process. You won't just be given, um, sorry, you won't just be given this and then have to work out how to work out its um, antiderivative. Um, you'll always be sort of given the steps that you need to be able to find it. So in this case, we're going to be able to find this antiderivative by first of all using what we learn from this derivative. Okay, so here part A says find f dash x. So find the derivative of this function that is log e of x cubed minus 1. Okay, so if we differentiate this, we're going to need the chain rule. Okay, so the derivative is going to be, it's log of something. Derivative of that is 1 over something. So 1 over that, but then we use chain rule, so we're multiplying by the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared. Okay, And so we find that 3x squared over x cubed minus 1 is the derivative of log e of x cubed minus 1. Okay, then hence. Hence is an important instruction in methods, which means you must use what you found in the previous part. Okay, so hence. Using what you've just found, evaluate this particular antiderivative. Okay, so what we want to do, what I always encourage you to do, is start with what you have learnt from the derivative. Okay, so we learnt that when we differentiated this red thing, we got this green thing. Okay, so if we know to get from there to there, we differentiate, then that means if we want to get from there back to there, we're going to antidifferentiate. Okay, so immediately what we learn is that the antiderivative, so from part A, we learn that the antiderivative of 3x squared over x cubed minus 1 is log e of x cubed minus 1. Now, okay, there'd be a plus c, but let's worry about that later. Let's just focus on working out um, the antiderivative that we need, and then we'll focus on this particular definite integral. Okay, so now what we want to focus on is we want to know about the antiderivative of this and we want to be able to think, work out how is it different from, to what we have. Okay, so we want to be able to identify that the only problem here is that this 3 here. So let's take that out and we know that this is the same as 3 times the antiderivative of x squared on x cubed minus 1. And we know that's equal to log e of x cubed minus 1. Okay, and then we can divide 3, divide both sides by 3, so that we now know that the antiderivative of x squared over x cubed minus 1 with respect to x is 1 third times log e of x cubed minus 1. Okay, so now we know that antiderivative. Okay, so that now means that if we're trying to antidifferentiate between 2 and 4, x squared over x cubed minus 1 with respect to x, we're going to get 1 third times log e of x cubed minus 1 between 2 and 4. Now I didn't include um, the modulus signs in my log and that's because I've got this x has to be bigger than 1 so that means it won't be a problem in the logs. Okay. Alright, um, we're substituting in 4 so we get 1 third times log e of uh, 4 cubed which is 64 minus 1, and then take away 1 third, sorry, times log e of 2 cubed, which is 8 minus 1. So that is 1 third log e of 63 minus 1 third log e of 7. Okay, 1 third is a common factor there. We take that out. We've got log e of 63 minus log e of 7. Okay. And so that is one third times log e of 63 divided by 7, which is 9. 
you could put that one third up into the power if you want but I wouldn't bother because cube root of 9 isn't anything helpful um, and so that is our um, antiderivative. So this whole idea is using what you learn from a derivative in order to be able to evaluate an antiderivative that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Okay let's have a look at another one. Find the derivative of x times sine of 2x and hence find an antiderivative of x times cos of 2x. So again, this on its own, if we were just asked to antidifferentiate x times cos of 2x, it's a product of two functions and we can't simplify it in a way to avoid the product and so we cannot antidifferentiate it with all the tools we currently have. So we're being guided through how to do it. Okay, so derivative of x times sine of 2x is going to require the product rule. So derivative of x is 1, we leave the second part of the function as it is, and then we add, we leave the x as it is, and we differentiate the second part of the function, which will be, sorry, it's anti-differentiate, this is where you'll start to get confused, which will be 2 times cos of 2x. Derivative of sine is cos. Okay, so we've got sine of 2x plus 2x times cos of 2x. Okay, now again, let's, learn, let's take what we learn from the derivative and turn it into an antiderivative. So we know that to get from here to here, we differentiate. And so therefore, to get from here back to here, we antiderentiate. Okay, so we immediately know that the antiderivative, we should have left us some more space here, just write small. The antiderivative of sine of 2x plus 2x times cos of 2x, which is the green thing. So forget about what you're trying to find the antiderivative of, just your first line of working should be immediately reversing what you learn from the derivative, okay? Then worry about how you're gonna turn that into what you need it to be, okay? So, oh sorry, that's sine of 2x. Okay, so derivative of red equals green, therefore antiderivative of green equals red, great. That's where we start. Now let's focus on what we're trying to isolate. We want to be able to anti-differentiate x times cos of 2x. Okay, and yes, there'll be plus c's. I'm going to stick that on at the end. So we want to isolate that bit alone. So let's focus on using our properties of integrals to split this integral on the left-hand side up. So we can break this up because this is the same as the integral of sine of 2x dx plus the integral of 2, sorry, the integral of 2x times cos of 2x dx and that's equal to x times sine of 2x. Okay, then we can also take that out so that we'll just have our antiderivative of x times cos of 2x. So let's do that. At the same time, let's subtract this over onto the other side of the equation. Okay, so we now know that we're going to have 2 times the integral of x, sorry, x cos 2x is equal to x times sine of 2x and then we can subtract the antiderivative of sine of 2x. Okay, so antiderivative of sine of 2x is uh, antiderivative of sine is negative cos. So we're going to have minus, it's going to be minus negative half cos 2x. Okay, so it's going to be x times sine of 2x plus one half times cos of 2x, we're nearly there, okay. And then last thing is we've just got to get rid of, sorry, just got to get rid of this two over here, okay, because remember this is what we're trying to work out. So we've got to get rid of that two, I'm going to do that by dividing both sides of the equation by two, so the antiderivative of x times cos of 2x with respect to x is half of x times sine of 2x plus a quarter times cos of 2x. And um, we can put a plus c, but we've got this nice little get out of jail free card here where it says find an antiderivative. So we've just given the particular antiderivative where c is zero, okay? By all means, you can add a constant on the end there if you want. Okay, so again, start with what you learn from the derivative, then work out how you're going to isolate the thing that you're actually interested in finding, okay? All right, let's do one more. So find the derivative of log e of cos x and hence find an antiderivative of tan x. So whilst we don't technically learn a rule for the antiderivative of tan of x, 
we can find it using this technique if we're stepped through it. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to differentiate log e of cos x. Okay. So it's a chain rule. We've got a cos function inside of a log function. So we know derivative of log of something is 1 on that something. So that's 1 on cos x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of cos is negative sine x. Okay. So we have negative sine x on cos x. And we know that sine x on cos x is tan x. So this is negative tan of x. Alright, so then let's take again what we know from the derivative. So we know derivative of red thing gives us green thing. So that then automatically means antiderivative of green thing gives us red thing. Okay, so antiderivative of negative tan of x is log e of cos of x. Again, we can worry about the plus c's at the end if we need them. We're not going to need them here because we're working out a definite integral. Okay, let's do two things at once. We're going to take the negative out of the integral and let's divide it over there at the same time. And so essentially we're going to get that the integral of tan of x is negative log e of cos of x. Okay, so now let's work out our definite integral. So we want to do that between pi on 6 and pi on 3. So it's going to be this between pi on 6 and, oh, sorry, pi on 3. Okay, so we're going to get negative log e of cos of pi on 3 minus negative log e of cos of pi on 6. Okay, so we're going to need some exact values here. Oops, sorry. So pi on 3 down here and pi on 6 up here half an equilateral triangle. So we've got negative log e of cos of pi on 3. Cos of pi on 3 is 1 half. Minus minus, so that's plus log e of cos of pi on 6. Cos of pi on 6 adjacent of hypotenuse is root 3 on 2. Okay, so we've used some exact values. Now we need to use some log laws. You've got Again, methods, everything starting to come together. We've used derivative skills, we've used anti-derivative skills, we've used exact values, we've used log laws. There's no separating the parts of this course and deciding that you're just going to ignore particular bits. Okay, so if I think about this, what I've actually got here is log e of root 3 on 2 take away log e of a half. Okay, so we know when we're subtracting logs, we divide. So that is going to be log e of root 3 on 2 divided by 1 half. So that is root 3 on 2 times 2 and so that's just going to be root 3 which obviously you could write as half times log e of 3 if you prefer but um, I think it's neat to having it all in the log but same thing. Okay so again work out your derivative take what you learn from the derivative and literally rewrite it the other way around as an antiderivative and then work from there towards what you're trying to actually find. So the work today just focusing on this skill alone is um, from a worksheet that's in the back of your blue booklet um, in Appendix K.